Hey, everybody, welcome to Big Blend Radio's Eat, Drink, and Be Merry show with Nancy and Lisa, your crazy mother-daughter travel team on the Love Your Parks tour and also publishers of Big Blend magazines, which includes Eat, Drink, and Be Merry magazine. So, you know, every first Saturday, we get to chat with travel writer Linda Kassam. You all know her Mm -hmm. as the food, wine, and shopping diva. And she always brings a really special guest on the show. And today we are going to Mesa, Arizona, and we're going to hear all about the fresh foodie trail so you know when you think about Arizona we used to live there and you know our storage unit is there Um, but you know Arizona is far more than saguaro cactus I like to call them gumby cactus but um, there really Mm. is a lot to Arizona and one thing is fresh produce and apparently Mesa Arizona that whole region is just really abundant and there's a whole trail to follow with restaurants and places for wine tasting olive tasting all kinds of good stuff. So we've got Linda Kassam joining us. Her article right now is up on Blend Radio and TV magazine, uh, blendradioandtv.com, and will be in the next issue of Eat, Drink, Bay Mary magazine. But we also have Zoe Schersel joining us from Visit Mesa. So welcome back, Diva Linda. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you very much. I actually just spent uh, several days up in Flagstaff, which is another Arizona find I had no idea about. So really excited to uh, share the different parts of Arizona. And this one, the Fresh Foodie Trail was a huge surprise being from Southern California. Personally, I thought we had a lock on all the fresh produce, but apparently not. There you go. I was, yep, I was wrong, wrong, wrong. So uh, in this trail that Visit Mesa has put together is really fun. I don't know that you could do it in a day unless you drove really, really fast, but uh, no, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that because each place is so unique and so much fun and it really showcases what uh, what is unique about Arizona and not just being a, a cactus place. It is a, it's a, it's a food bowl kind of thing. I mean, it's a bread basket. Who knew? I loved it. It was wonderful. And thank you to Visit Mesa for putting this foodie trail together. I hope many, many, many people go and visit this. It's just a real eye opener. Awesome. Awesome. Welcome, Zoe. How are you doing? What's what's today like in Mesa? Doing okay. It's actually pretty cool out. So, you know, we're going through springtime right now. It was 80 degrees last week, and now I think it's like high of 65 (laughs) today. So we're getting, we're still nice weather. I can't complain. (laughs) Mm. Ah, awesome. Awesome. So this is really interesting about, you know, because Mesa is right outside Phoenix, right? So we all think of Phoenix as metropolitan. So the last thing we think of is farm fresh right outside a giant city, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And honestly, what a lot of people and my like me and myself included, I'm from Wisconsin. So when I moved out to Arizona, I had no idea that we even had lakes, that we had farms, you know, we have citrus, we have so much citrus. Um, There's actually five seas to Arizona, if I can remember them all. It's citrus, copper, cattle, climate, and I forgot the other one. Cactus? No. And casinos? (laughs) Casinos. Honestly, maybe there's more than five seas then, but Mm -hmm. no, citrus is huge. These farms are there's so many farms in the East Valley. And what's so unique about the East Valley too is yes, we have Phoenix, um, you know, to the west of us, but then we also have the Tonto National Forest, which is the fifth largest natural forest to the east of us. And so not only do we have all of this like new development coming, we still have our farms, we have our hiking. So when we created uh, the Fresh Foodie Trail, it was actually created by Michelle Streeter, who is the Chief of Communications here at Visit Mesa. In 2015, she really envisioned, you know, this culinary getaway and just the ultimate foodie road trip. But at the same time, mm. she wanted to highlight all of our agritourism spots um, and all of these farms because, like, like you were saying, Linda, they do have like a unique story. And so it's not something that I would recommend rushing through in one day. You really want to take your time and just learn more about like these experiences that you're going to have. 
Mm. Nice. And a lot of these are family um, farms, right? And that's something I think which is really exciting for families to go to. So kids get to know where their produce comes from, that it's more, you know, the grocery does not have a growing section. <laughs> and and when, when, the, when you go in the grocery store and it starts to rain, that it's not real rain. So you've got to go out to the farm and really experience it. But let's start with agri, uh, Agritopia. Uh, that seems like it, that, like, that's like the that is of really interesting because I had taken a press trip to Agritopia seven, eight years ago, uh, oh. whenever it first started. And, and at that time, it was uh, truly a, a kind of a uh, farm with houses around it with, a, excuse me, with a restaurant or two coming uh, uh, in. And now I go back and it's really a slick project. It's beautiful, unique homes around it. So, so think of a square, instead of the town square, think of a farm square where you can grow things, where you're actually able to go. And cool. uh, if you live there, if you live there, you can grow things. So, you know, pocket gardens. And, um, and then if not, then, uh, you know, just enjoy, get on a bike and come over to the, the little square, the restaurant uh, and um, retail shop squares, which is so unique. It's wonderful. What an what a interesting evolution. I don't think when they envisioned this particular place that they thought it was going to be so slick, but it is very slick now. And, not, and when I went there, there was nothing around it. And of course, if you go there now, it's just been developed. So I'm really, I'm really happy they at least have a growing farm that you can, as residents, come in and grow your own fruits and vegetables if you like. But uh, it's just unique to see and hooray for them for giving it a shot. Putting uh, it's now, I would, before I would have said it was outside the, the home boundaries, but now it's surrounded by all sorts of stores and all sorts of stuff. So it's quite wonderful. I, uh, oh, and you can sit there and eat, have a drink. Uh, there's a beer, a beer, a brewery there. Uh, well, uh, help me, Zoe. There's also there's a winery. Of, mm -hmm. A winery. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Cool. So when I went there, you get, they had a drive through dairy. Isn't that funny? They had a drive through dairy, but it's, it's evolved. Does it go and move everything you, when you pull yeah. out? <laughs> yeah. 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 It's really great. It was fun. Uh, so it's, as things uh, evolve, uh, that's fine. You know, I just hate to see Arizona get so um, urbanized. I'm sure Zoe can tell you too, but you know, one day you're driving down the road and you're in an orange patch and the next day you're driving down the same road to visit five friends in a development. So mm -hmm. um, anyway, uh, good, good, place to, good place to start, have breakfast, you can have lunch, you can have dinner, you can stroll the gardens and just sort of uh, nice. see the houses. The houses are extremely unique actually. They are not what I would call Arizona type homes. I would say more craftsman. They look like craftsman type homes. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Really good. All good. I loved it. Thought it was wonderful. So it's like a um, village, basically. Like a. Like a, it was supposed to be. Uh, I, I, do, I do think they said a rural village in an urban setting. But when I yeah. went, it was a rural village without anything around it. So uh, it's just what a shock just to see. Uh, when she says, Zoe, they just have anything you want around this. Anything. Well, I think the concept behind Agrotopia is so unique. I, I love it. I love going there. I feel like I learned something new every single time I go there. Um, it was originally bought out by um, the Johnson family. They bought it from the Reber family. And fun fact about Gilbert is they were actually the hay capital of Arizona. So that's back when they were growing hay. Wow. Um, and then... Like Linda was saying in the late 90s, like around the late 90s, early 2000s, that's when the town of Gilbert was starting to see that rapid growth and like suburban development. And so the Johnstons, you know, they wanted to preserve the farm, but they also had to keep up with this rapid growth. And so that's when they um, started partnering with, you know, architects and the town of Gilbert. And then they created this village where it's home to everyone. It's it's awesome. So like within the area, they have a school. I think they have like around 450 homes right now, uh, give mm. or take maybe more. Um, they have a senior living center. They have restaurants. Um, the Bar Nun, which actually used to be a, um, oh, what are those called? 
where you would store all your farming equipment, but that's like a shed or a barn. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. And so bar none, um, that's kind of like the center of Agritopia. That's where they have all the craftsmen work. Um, they cool. have the brewery, the winery, and it's actually made from this scrap metal from World War II um, planes because 15 miles down the road or 10 miles down the road, you have uh, Mesa Gateway Airport, which used to be um, a World War II training base. Wow. And so they really utilize, you know, all of this like amazing architect around them to keep up with the growth of Gilbert. And now they have restaurants. They turned their own um, tractor shed into a coffee shop. They converted their own house into what's now Joe's Farm Grill, which was actually on, I always screw this name up, Diners, Drive-Ins and Dives. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. You know, it's an amazing concept and it really is um, a unique experience. And they also have the community garden where you can rent out a portion of the garden and grow your own produce. I think that's, that's cool. great. Are yeah. places like this on the trail open year round? Because I know a lot of people are thinking, oh, summertime. In fact, I think this is even airing in the summertime. I have to look it up. But is, you know, is, are these open in the summer? Because a lot of people are worried, oh, Arizona and the heat. But, you know, having lived in Arizona for many years, I know it's like, and even in the desert in Southern California, it's like, there, you actually have really longer days and you get up really early. You have evenings outside by the mm -hmm. firemen and it's like, it is magical it's living. Nice. And, and when it's really hot, you go in and you either go on, in the pool or you go have margaritas somewhere, but <laughs> so it's not like you die in the summer, but uh, is it, are these places open or do some close yep. down or? Nope. All these places are open year round. Wow. Oh, which wow. Is that is cool. awesome. Yeah. It, it, bar none does have AC, by the way. <laughs> if you want to, oh, yeah. if you're still <laughs> walking around the farm outside when it's 110 degrees, I don't blame you. You can go wow, in that's... and that's when you can enjoy a brew, a nice, um, a nice cocktail Ooh. or a nice beer in their brewery. You were cool. talking about citrus earlier, and the one place is Jalapeno mm -hmm. Bucks featuring B and B Citrus Farms, and this is in Mesa. So uh, the citrus, you know, that is something interesting about it growing. I know that it used to, they used to do a lot in Yuma, Arizona, and even in Enza Borrego Desert, that is in California, uh, just west of you. But it seems that it's not as much as it used to. It seems that it's maybe migrated to you. Yeah. So. With Jalapeno Bucks, that's like another amazing story. Um, Dwayne and Diane Burden, they actually purchased um, this 32 acre grove uh, in the late or in the early 70s. And it's actually the trees that were planted there is one of the oldest orchards in Arizona. It dates back to 1915. And wow. so not just like in that area around Jalapeno Bucks, but when you drive through the East Valley, you'll see numerous amounts of um, citrus trees, even in Agritopia, like they had citrus trees there. So it's not uncommon to see that in the East Valley. That's a lot oh, of okay. mimosas. They didn't migrate then. There's no migration. Yeah. No, it's, there, there's a lot of mimosas well, out there. There is. And what's yeah. really unique about um, this stock is that it is an orange grove. You don't see anything else. All you see is orange groves. Cool. A fruit stand which you're looking at, like that may be uh, your background. Yes. And um, and then you can, it was, there's nothing like farm fresh fruit. I'm sorry, yeah. it tastes better than anything you get in the market. And now I'm, now I'm spoiled because I did this tour for about, I did it in about three weeks going each week. And, uh, you know, this fruit is just so wonderful. And, it, you know, it's priced well and people are friendly and, you can just get anything you want. You can see uh, grapefruit there, oranges, just everything. So go to the fruit stand. Well, actually what I did was we parked, well, actually even further back, as we came around the corner, we saw a ton of um, uh, police cars. And we thought, oh my God, something's wrong. Oh my God, no, it was, it was their lunch break. All, all the police. <laughs> oh, so they traded in donuts <laughs> for citrus. Oh my yeah, God. There it is. So anyway, um, uh, first I stood in the orange grove, which was just, you know, that's just fun. That is just after I, the tractor guy wasn't real thrilled about me doing that, but you know, I thought it was great fun. Then I went to the fruit stand. It's your shoes, Diva. He saw I those know, sparkles. Well. He says, not in the orange grove, put on your <laughs> boots, the Diva oh, boots. That's true. That could be true. And then um, I went into the fruit stand and, uh, you know, there's just all sorts of things to buy, which of course excites me. And then 
five, seven, nine steps away is this remarkably unique barbecue slash Mexican food stand mm. with all the police in the area having lunch. The line is out and swirling around the road. Wow. I mean, this is just a little stand, wow. just a little baby stand, just a little, and, and the only um, place to eat is on picnic tables, which are in the orange groves. And so it's oh, a half nice. hour wait minimum. So, and the food. So we you actually, you know, waiting, you're talking to people, what are, what are you going to eat? What are you going to eat? And it was a good mix of the half we're doing the Mexican food menu and half we're doing the barbecue menu. But, uh, oh my God. The barbecue menu was unreal, wouldn't you say, Zoe? I mean, it's just oh yeah. And I, I, I feel like you're gonna judge me for this, but my favorite menu item is the peanut butter and jelly brisket sandwich, and it's oh, oh. wow. I know. Oh. I always get that reaction, and huh, whatever I do, you though, <laughs> I, I eat peanut butter and pickled burgers, so. Oh, all right. So no, not far off then. But mm. whenever I do tours there, I always um, order it and then I'll cut it in half. And I'm like, you just got to try it. I mean, you know, if you don't like it, I promise you won't hurt my feelings. And I don't, nine out of 10 times, everyone's, it surprises them. I want to mm. go and do that. I'm in. Yeah, I'm Sounds totally good. in. This oh, is our kind so of good. Oh, Elvis would have liked it. Yeah, the Elvis would like know it. That you, you go online, order what you want pick it up and eat it there or take it home. Oh. And this, huge, this line is huge and, and it never fails that you always get behind the three people that can't remember what they wanted if they didn't pre-order. <laughs> oh, here comes the diva. <laughs> so, and then of all things, the window, the window in this little shacky place is up to my nose. So like a little kid, I'm standing on my toes, trying to give my order, feeling- Please, stupid. miss, please, can I have please, some more? Can I have some more? But this <laughs> sounds very Southern with the with the barbecue kind of, you know, it yeah. really does sound like, you know, some place you would get in the South and, you know, oh. that's, that's the thing. But I love it that it's farm and food and it's, you know, not over the top, you know what I mean? And yeah. we need to have places where you're outside, you can breathe, you can just relax and not be- pretentious you know I always good to get food that hasn't been shipped 1500 miles yeah bounced around the back of a truck you know yeah yeah Yeah. well we've got to bring up schnepp farms in queen creek and and in queen creek is also queen creek olive mill which uh, we can attest to um is amazing olive oil and mm-hmm. we did a recent interview uh you can go see it on blend radio and tv.com uh and a great story by diva linda and uh with perry we we chat with him and uh that was wow that was like a whole mm-hmm. education on olive oil i think um i've never been educated so much on olive oil <laughs> like you know i mean it was really great mm-hmm. uh, great conversation and uh it's so we've got the citrus, we've got the wine, we've got brisket, we've got everything growing, fruits, vegetables, we've got olive oil. But Schnepp Family Farms, from what he was saying, is that they were there and he actually got part of his farmland from them. So Queen Creek is, you know, this has been going for a while, another family story. Yeah, um, Schnepp Farms and Queen Creek Olive Mill, both, like, they have such amazing stories and both of them have like such an immersive experience like tied within them so like when you're at queen creek olive mill you know you don't go there you know just to buy the olive oil you don't go there just to eat you really have like the entire experience so you go and you enjoy their italian inspired like eatery and their tuscany inspired grove and every single one of their menu items is made from their olive oil, especially like their cupcakes. So they have like chocolate olive oil where they make their cupcakes. Oh. And then you take the tour and you go on the olive oil 101 tour. And I can tell you, I probably took that tour at least 20 times now. And I still always <laughs> learn something new. And there's always um, something new to taste. And Diva Linda, the one thing you went on about is like, we always think about olive oil to eat and taste, cook with. Um, but uh, Diva Linda, of course, being the Diva Linda food, wine and shopping was, you're into the beauty products on that side, the spa products. Oh, um, the spa products are fabulous. Do oh, they twinkle? <laughs> They, they oh, twinkle. They are, you know, they're made from olive oil. And I, I don't know, you know, first I thought, I don't know if I want olive oil on my face or my hands. Oh, you but do. Holy cow, you. you do. You take a little bit and it, it kills. 
any other hundred dollar cream. I mean, it just really feels nice and it lasts and it stays. And one thing I'd like to say about uh, going to Queen Creek Olive Mill is check for the events that they're having. Their events are really special and really huh. focuses in on what Queen Creek Olive Mill is all about. The other day I went to their uh, pizza night. So I learned how to make a, an authentic pizza uh-huh. And uh, and, it w- and it, there was w- a wine pairing with it, and I think it was a four or five course meal, and hands wow. on learning how to make pizza with all the olive oils and so <laughs> forth. And you know, these are the things that when you go on vacation or when you want to have a, a time to yourself and go someplace, you want to be as, as Zoe said, you want an immersive experience, mm-hmm. something that more than oh, look at the olive oil bottles on the shelf. Isn't that nice? No, what you want is hands-on, taste, smell, see, uh, yeah. take that darn tour. tour. Um, this is just a family that is so hand, wouldn't you say Zoe is so hands-on? I mean, like they're there every day. There's like five kids or something and everybody is doing something. So you, could, and, you could go watch the Diva Toss pizza in the air, like pizza yes. dough. Did you do it? Yes. Awesome. Right always gets mouth. her hands dirty, but then you know she's got her twinkle shoes on, so <laughs> but flour on her shoes. And, uh, oh, no, that's no, not no. allowed. No, they say give it a twirl, so you know you, you give it and cool. If it, if it lands okay, it's okay, but sometimes it goes right through your knuckles. But it, it's immersive, it's fun, it's cool. a great place. And Schneff Farms is that how you pronounce it? Schneff Schneff Farms, yep. Now that's an interest. So I'm going to tell you that Olive Creek Mill is kid and and dog friendly. Then you go over to Schneff Farms, and this is um, very interesting. It's uh, I would say somebody very pet friendly. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's uh, interesting, and uh, you can go take a little train ride through their orchards and the bakery. Really? Was, oh, yeah, oh that's it. Ride. And oh, everybody I love train can fit rides. in the train. Don't worry, it's not a baby train. It's a little train that you can go see. And um, and when the peaches are blooming, would you say Zoe oh. is just the most amazing? Oh, I love okay. stone fruit in bloom just, and citrus in bloom. It Ooh, smells it's so just, wonderful. Yeah, it's just something that you have to do at least once in your life. The bakery again is local food and products, and uh, nice. I think we bought one of everything. I mean, really, seriously, including an apple pie and. Um, Oh, but it's good for you know you when you have people that come and visit you and they, they bring their kids and you go holy holy heck what am I going to do here? Uh, this is a good, this is a very good place because the kids can run. They have I think they even have an ice skating rink. I didn't get in, but um, oh, there are wow. all sorts of stuff all over. That might be during one of their festivals. They bring it out. Oh, maybe. maybe. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've so seen, they have I'm different sure events. That might be during like, because they have numerous festivals. It might be during one of their festivals. It's a huge, like Linda was saying, it's a huge, huge farm. So um, oh. it is Arizona's largest or grant or organic peach grower. Wow. Oh, okay. Wow. Cool. Wow. So, you know, so festival, that's the other thing, these farms having events, you know, when agritourism came about, a lot of it was, you know, how do we support these local smaller farms? You know, th- this is, and even when you're saying it's the largest, you know, organic peach, it's still going to be a small family farm in res- retrospect to the giants. And we all know who the big giants are. But this is really better for the community and really good for the land to have, you know, a lot of them, even if they're not organic, they're doing organic practices, um, working with nature. So it's a healthy existence between, you know, people that are living there and the growers. And, you know, agritourism is great. It's educational, but it's supporting these families and events were at one point the only way they could do this kind of thing. They have to go get a special permit, put on the event. And now it's getting, it's so great to see that these places are open, you know, year round and, you know, still doing events, but also open if you, you know, don't make it to a special event, you know, so it's really, I mean, I remember hearing about these farms maybe 10, 15 years ago, like just, they were, Mm -hmm. Hey, we're, we're harvesting our pumpkins kind of thing. And you go, yeah, you go out and it's a, you pick or whatever. And that was it. But now it just seems that this is really something that you can keep up with year round. If you live in the area, you know, that's cool. 
Yeah, and their Chinook Farms you pick gardens are always in season, and they're always open the same time that their country store is open. So you can go and grab a bakery item, you can go pick a new garden, and then obviously the prices do vary by, um, you know, your type of produce. But another great immersive experience within Schnapp Farms is also the Cozy Peach. They have their own glamping inside the farm. Oh. And so there's, I don't, wow. I don't know the exact oh, that's number, cool. but there's a variety of these old vintage trailers that Carrie Schnapp actually renovated and they, she gutted them and now she made them um, like their own personal style. They have like a television, microwave, they have refrigerators, like plush bedding. Cool. You have, Seriously, like, a I'm thinking peach mimosas yeah. out on the orchard, yeah. wake up to that, you know, freshly baked bread. Wow. Then you get up on the train right after your mimosa. This is sounding good. <laughs> oh, it's great. Like you, you know, you go glamping. That's what we like to call it. You go yeah. glamping in the trailers. You they nice. have bikes there. So you just hop on the bike and you explore the farm. You know, they have so much. After the peach mimosa. <laughs> yeah, <there you> <laughs> this That's sounds number one awesome. priority. That yeah. is awesome. And and they're they're so close to uh Olive Creek, right? Aren't they all uh the Olive Creek Mill? Um, five minutes away. Olive Mill. Yeah. So you could just yeah. kind of cycle around and be that's really really cool to be able to do uh the i think so many families are glamping now and it's people want that authentic experience when they stay someplace so we're seeing a lot of glamping a lot of you know even brand hotels are starting to really pick up and realize we need to have artwork that you know reflects the region not just what corporate says so it's it's really good to see this change happening so we've got queen creek and then let's go back to mesa uh, you say True Garden Urban Farm in Mesa. This is some place that I definitely, um, there's also a winery in Florence. I did not know Florence, uh, the original capital seat, or yeah, the original capital, capital of Arizona <clears throat> had a winery. So now we have to go to Florence, but um, this True Farm, this, this seems, and I think, is that, no, they're the ones doing all the hydroponics, right? Yep, True Garden is, yep. True Garden. Ooh, I want yeah. to go there. Have you seen their vertical? Sorry, Linda. <laughs> go, no, uh, I, I'm just saying my impression. It's hard to find. It's in a strip mall. Who knew? What? Uh, see, yeah, yeah, it's in a strip mall, but oh, hello. It, with a very, oh. I think, a very narrow store frontage, but you go in and back, and there's a great big tent that you can go through and so forth, but, you know, gardening has to evolve just like everything else, so You've seen these other ones that you go to. This might be a good one to go to last because it's sort of, I think I sort of felt like it was maybe the future of gardening because it's um, because of the way this is set up. I'll let Zoe uh, tell you the background on this, but it kind of gives you, uh, I don't know. It's, I just look at it and think, you know, I've just been to all these mom and pop places with the oranges and bins of stuff and um, train rides hopping on. And here you come to, this is really slick. This is a very slick presentation of urban gardening and it's for sale. There, It is, uh, the this, this stuff that you're gonna see is for sale, but the idea is so dynamic. Wouldn't you say, Zoe? Oh yeah, we actually used to have one of those vertical towers in our office um, and they're oh, great. Cool. So like you're saying, uh, True Garden, they feature um, these hydroponic like gardening techniques. They work with vertical gardening. So I don't know if you've ever seen um, the vertical towers that they have, but by utilizing this technique, they can use 95% less water and 90% less space. And they also oh. have no harmful like chemicals or pesticides. And they nice. can, it also gives them the opportunity to grow their crops year round because they're not outside where it does get, you know, it does get pretty hot in Arizona um, and everything's in a greenhouse. And because they're, you know, growing vertically, they have more space to grow more produce. And you can really taste it. Uh, Linda, did you get an opportunity to like taste um, the produce? I did. The and it's, it's, uh, it's clean is the best way I can put it, right? It's not so, uh, not so much the dirt taste, if I, if I can, if that's the way to explain it, but there, because there's no pesticides, there's no nothing. It's just a yeah, clean. Yeah, it's, 
product. Very good. You can taste the difference. Um, mm -hmm. And you can go to their market. It's open Wednesday and Saturday. You can even take one of their educational tours. But it's something I would highly recommend because it's it's very unique. And um, yeah, I feel like it's like the future of growing. Yeah. Wow. How cool. I think a lot of people, I, I think it's great because if you people can start doing it in their homes too, you know, it's, it's, it's something that's healthy for your house. Keeps well, your a house great space if you can do it. Too. It's I great, mean, great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And nice. maybe if you can't, uh, you know, if, if you're, uh, if you're a person who doesn't really enjoy gardening outside in the elements with the bees and the flowers and the ducks and the bugs and so forth, this is sort of an alternative. To, to have to be able to grow things in a, in a captured environment and stuff tastes darn good that's what I'll tell you so oh um, that's good know, yeah yeah so it's quite an experience one that I think is uh worthy of being on the foodie trail I wouldn't have thought of it myself and I don't uh but you know there is some things in Arizona are in the strip mall and they are quite wonderful you know well just... hey that's what breweries started doing is taking over mm -hmm. like the industrial parks and you know I, it's better Why than not? things sitting open I, I yeah. think they should be all become like really cool Airbnbs and apartments you know we need more apartments in the country so take over the strip <laughs> malls put gardens in them put put the brewery the apartment the winery <laughs> the bakery <laughs> and you know and the strip malls come on and, and the garden needs to be there that's awesome I, I want to go to Florence, Arizona, because, you know, Florence and that whole area, it, you know, it's a really historic downtown. It's very charming. And it's you rarely actually hear about Florence, but it was the original county seat. And there's a lot of history out of Florence. And that's how I, I think that's where um, Pearl Hart was captured, uh, the gunslinger of Arizona. She was captured in Florence and ended up in the Yuma Territorial Prison. And then I think she went back to Florence. I don't know, but her and Joe <laughs> did something between Florence and, um, and she got herself out pretending she was pregnant. But anyway, yes, out of prison. <laughs> But who knew there would be a winery there? So uh, I don't, you know, has this winery always been there? The wine, the windmill winery. So um, tell us about them being in Florence. This is, do you want to start off with that, Zoe? Yeah, so it was first established as a brickyard in like the turn of the 20th century <laughs> and then changed to a dairy farm. And then now oh. it is, it is what it is. It's windmill winery. So the best way I can describe wow. it is, it's an off the grid oasis where you can relax and enjoy the scenery and sip on fine Arizona wine. Because that's another thing I didn't know when I moved here that, you know, we do make wine in Arizona. That's mm. right on. And there is dairy, so you can still get your cheese, right? <laughs> well, it used to be, that's one of the stops I, it's still on my bucket list to go. And it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, wedding venue too. Um, but it used to be a dairy farm. I don't think that they still carry any of those products it's officially like she, their own winery now yeah but it's beautiful during the fall time too because you know we don't get a lot of the or people think actually we don't get a lot of the changing of colors but when you're out in Florence like we do and it's beautiful around that time mm -hmm. oh it is that whole area yeah, I think I, it was Green Creek too yeah I think it was a, a, a very interesting stop so sometimes when wineries combine as combine themselves as a tasting room slash wedding venue something loses the translation it loses uh, because the wedding venue generally takes over because it's a huge money maker huge i mean you can support anything you ever want to do by having a wedding venue so sometimes the tasting room area keeps getting you know smaller and smaller to accommodate whatever the the wedding venue is but I sort of felt that I didn't really uh feel I was at a wedding venue when I was in the area the tasting area it was sort of all by itself and um mm. you can you can drink inside which is nice or you can drink outside if you want oh I like um, that the, I want to be out this a little it was different I wasn't expecting that you would buy purchase flights not single glasses of wine you buy flights oh nice I think that's smart yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the price the price point is just fine um so the i think there were four or five wines that we tried and, and there's like a gazillion combinations that you know all whites all reds a mixture of dry sweet what you know whatever so if you can articulate what it is that you love 
then you can have that type of tasting and maybe have a couple of those tastings. Generous, generous tastings, I thought. And a charcuterie board was really pretty oh, and very nice. nice. And, uh, and I think that's the way to go. And, you, and sitting out, I felt outside was a better option than inside, but uh, there are plenty of people inside, outside, all around. You can walk around if you like. Uh, they make it easy. No one comes to your table. You you go to a bar. Luckily, it was one that wasn't up here to me. I could actually see what I was doing. So waist high. And um, you pick, you order and you pick it up and you take it to your table and there's no rush, you know, be there for a day if you like, a half a day, you know, whatever it is. And I think it's just like you said, who would think that Florence, Arizona mm-hmm. would have a winery sitting out in the middle of <laughs> Florence. There's not a, there's you know the horizon is sort of all the way around. There's I didn't see a lot of houses or anything. Very very interesting place, and I think it's uh, for people uh, for locals. It's a place you really need to go. And for people who are wondering what to do with visitors, it's a great place. It takes a little it takes a little while. How far would you say it's from downtown Phoenix, Zoe? About oh, from downtown Phoenix or downtown Mesa? Yeah. Phoenix? Mesa, Mesa, Mesa. I'm sorry. From downtown Mesa, probably like ooh, it's out there, 35, 40 minutes. Oh, yeah, that's not that's bad at all. Was, that's a nice yeah. drive. It is it's beautiful because you've got all the mountains as well. Like you were saying, you know, fall and uh, mm-hmm. you know, Arizona, that area. I mean, Arizona is beautiful year round. I, you know, and, and summers. I love summers. I love the warmth. Trust me. <laughs> we want to defrost. <clears throat> and we did your Wisconsin, by the way, in winter. And oh. I think you're you're in a really good spot. <laughs> and we love your state, but I'm just saying. Mm. Um, but really, the, the mountains out there are so beautiful. And if you're there in the summer, the monsoon season is just oh, magic. That's amazing. So yeah, it is mm. awesome. But ladies, thank you so much. Uh, just what a great destination. We can't wait to get home to Arizona. Uh, everyone, you can keep up with the Diva Linda and her adventures, and she goes on many. Go to allingoodtaste.info. <laughs> also, uh, read her story again up on blendradioandtv.com. You'll find Diva Linda in our expert department, and you'll also see it in the up- upcoming issue of Eat, Drink, and Be Merry magazine. And of course, keep up with Mesa. Go to visitmesa.com to plan your trip uh, to Arizona and keep up with us at Big Blend Radio. Radio.com. You'll see Diva Linda here every Saturday. So thank you so much for joining <laughs> us, ladies. Thank My you so pleasure. much for having me. <laughs> well, awesome. fun. Great job. Mm. Next time, next time, let's have some wine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes. And yeah. Florence, of course. Cool. Yeah.